on CityCast Madison. Have you ever been out for a drink and wondered about that beef jerky looking thing hanging up in a case on the bar? Well, if you're in Southern Wisconsin, it's likely a Lawn Jaeger. They're pairs of ready to eat sausages that can be stored out in the open without refrigeration. And for a long time, they're smoked and fermented and their popularity stems from Swiss and German farming communities in the area. And no one loves them more than Jesse Brookstein. He wrote a book all about them called A Perfect Pair, The History of Lawn Jaeger in Greene County, Wisconsin. It's Thursday, February 16th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Jesse, hello. Hello there. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. So let's just dive right in. What is a Land Jaeger? Uh, well, the long and short of it, when I'm at an event, I'll tell people that it's a fermented and smoked sausage snack. Uh, But if you really want to get into it, it is a cured, fermented, smoked, and dried sausage snack. They actually look like a sausage when they come out, and then they get flattened up. So they are sausages at the end of the day. Yeah, they definitely have a distinct shape. Yep, exactly. Once they're flattened, that's one of the iconic things about them. The Landjaeger is definitely having a moment right now, more than just in my life. (laughs) So uh, can you tell us, how does it differ from other sausages? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, right? Because why it's cool and why it really um, excites me in a lot of ways is it is a cured product. So it starts off with that. And that's basically, you know, to keep any of the pathogenic and spoilage bacteria at bay. But then it's fermented. And now there are some people I've talked to that do it differently, but typically that involves a starter culture. And so that starter culture kicks off and the acids build up, the lactic acid builds up. So that cure is kind of keeping all of that bad bacteria at bay as this lactic acid bacteria is building up. And that essentially is going to get that Lawn down to a pH uh, that it's safe enough to consume. And then after that, here in the States, you're going to smoke it. You're going to take it up to a temp of, say, 120 just to kill off all bacteria. And then you're going to dry it to get that last water activity down to the certain level where you want it to be. So there's several steps in this process, especially the cook step here in the States that kind of create a safety net. But lo and behold, the fermentation and the drying make Lawn Jaeger a snack that, although weird to some people, can sit out in the open air without refrigeration and can be snacked on at the bar with a bottle of High Life. So it's pretty awesome. I'm learning so much <laughs> and starting with the fact that it's Lawn Jaeger. And I was saying land, it's la- Lawn or Lund, so, Lawn Jaeger. You know, when I, when, I, when I first moved to Wisconsin, having uh, ties to Lawn Jaeger back to the uh, upstate New York where I'm from, I used to call it Land Jaeger. Uh, but talking to all the, the folks that I've met and interviewed, it sounds like Lawn Jaeger is the way to go. So I always just kind of think of Lawn, yay! Grr, you know, and then we have some stickers. <laughs> well, we too. have Jaeger bombs, unfortunately. Exactly, <laughs> right. Them. And so that's yeah. the thing. Just, yeah, just think of Lond and then Jaeger bomb and you're all set. Yeah, Lond Jaeger. And so why is Green County a Lond Jaeger hotbed specifically? It's really cool because throughout the country where I've found Lond Jaeger hotspots other than Green County, other than Wisconsin, it's typically always a German community. Uh, and that can be out in Washington, upstate New York, Pennsylvania. Um, it's usually always German. In this situation, in Greene County and New Glarus, it's predominantly Swiss. Uh, and then up in Dane County, you've got Bavaria sausage, which is proudly German. But for some reason, after hitting up about 30 different Lawn Jaeger spots, meat shops uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin, and knowing that there's probably about 40 or 50 uh, in the state total, It seems to be the highest concentration of places where you find what I'd consider traditional Lawn Jaeger are in Greene County, and they're only the place that almost often has these Lawn Jaeger in these wooden display cases. You go to anywhere else in the state, even though it's so popular, and you rarely find it in these wooden cases. So there's something about that pocket of Swiss pride uh, that really uh, stands out amongst our other 71 counties. 
Wow. And I have to admit, seeing them and, you know, <laughs> for all those who don't eat meat, maybe this isn't exciting for you, but seeing them, I saw them in a window hanging, you know, and so that yeah. was, and it, they just look attractive. I don't know. That's that's my t- <laughs> It's entirely true. And to be honest with you, as delicious as Lon Jaeger is, I do think the a big driving force and why people like it and get it as often as they do is because of those wooden display cases that they're in. And, you know, I talk to folks all throughout the state and it, even if they don't have the display case, uh, it's often one of their best selling products. But it's something you don't really see. As soon as you see it, you go, why is that meat hanging in that wooden case? And then you go, why is it not refrigerated? And then you go, you what know what? I'll eat it. I'm going to eat it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty much that progression. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it must be safe. It's just the same thing as when you come to Wisconsin and see like cheese curds sitting, you know, on a gas station uh, counter. Like you go to any other state, you're like, I'm not touching that. In Wisconsin, you're like, give me 10 of those, you know? So Yeah, that's a really good comparison. Yeah, we're we're just wild with what we'll eat. <laughs> but, right. but, there, but it turns out not that wild because there's a science to it and it's safe, as you explained. Yes. I have one in front of me and I'm going to taste it. All right. And by taste it, I've had them before um, and I like them a lot already. And this is my first time eating anything on the show. So here we go. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh. All right. So right away, it's like, <laughs> right away, it's crunchy. So that's kind of fun. Yep. Yep. It's so flavorful. I don't know if I'm going to gross people out talking. <laughs> <laughs> I take it. No, people are like, oh, my God, that sounds so good. Give me some of that. Mm. I think you're eating a pair of Bavaria sausage. If I'm. Yep. Yep. So Correct. that's Bavaria down in Fitchburg. They're wonderful people. Uh, Judy, uh, her father started it decades ago and they've carried on a proud tradition there. And honestly, it's one of the coolest retail meat shops I've ever been in the, in the entire country. I mean, I just feel blessed because this is new to my life and I don't even think of myself. I don't cook meat for myself. It's kind of, for me, it's a little bit of an endeavor to cook meat. So just to be able to get it so easily like that, just hand snack. But then it's so flavorful. Like it really, really is. Can you talk about the flavors and like what's going on there? Because it's just, it's like warm. It's it's really tasty. (laughs) No, yeah, totally. So The one you're eating in particular uh, is definitely a little more bold than some of the other ones. Uh, From what I've gathered from some of the interviews I did for the book, um, the Swiss seem to be a little more gentle in their spicing, uh, very similar to the beer industry where the Belgians are very subtle uh, in their spicing. Uh, And the German sausages do tend to have like a quite a bit of flavor ranging from curryverse to knockverse or other of the more bold sausages. But while none of the uh, producers are really, they're never in the mood to give up the spices they use exactly. You know, very typically they'll use, you know, nutmeg or allspice or coriander (laughs) or fennel, caraway. And a lot of that flavor you're getting too, which, you know, I say this a lot, but it's very similar to beer. A lot of the flavor you're getting is brought to you via the fermentation process and kind of that sweet little tang that might exist there. Uh, that twanginess, I feel, kind of lines up well to the meats, to the spices. And it kind of, you know, it, this is kind of geeky, but the oftentimes the more fat you have in the product will kind of help carry the flavor and it'll kind of leave that coating on the tongue where you're left with this like residual flavor that you've gathered from it. And it, it's just great because like, the thing that I think about it now is it's a novelty, right? You'll go to musky, you'll go to, you know, any barley pop and pick up a pear to enjoy with a beer. But this is such a novel idea. Like they were doing this prior to the understanding of fermentation and they created a way to find and preserve meat that they could take with them on their travels without dying from it. Like that is simply fantastic scientific knowledge. They didn't even know they had at the time. And so now we just kind of have fun with it. But it's it's a pretty neat culturally, traditionally and scientifically awesome thing. And now we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Can you talk about what Lon Jaeger stands for? Because I am talking about the intent of, you know, why they needed that process. So. The direct translation, really straightforward, is just land hunter or country hunter. And so one of my questions I asked when interviewing people for the book was, who do you think these hunters were? 
And, you know, I heard different answers, whether it be somebody hunting for the family, be it somebody who is a professional hunter, you know, maybe for the state. Because we think now that we've got Austria and we've got Germany and we've got Switzerland, but we need to think that hundreds of years ago, these borders as we know them didn't really exist. And, you know, militaries and police forces, you know, so much of history as we know it, you know, you read book after book, it's typically like the mid 1700s that a lot of the things that we now know to be our written history are kind of when a lot of things started transitioning. So my research, and this could be completely wrong, but in my book, I talk about, I believe that the Lawn Jaegers that are referenced in this are actually game wardens. And because as a job, they were out there stopping poachers from coming into either the owner of the land or the federal owner of the land, right? Uh, either private or, you know, a part of the state and stopping their animals from being poached, or they would lead individuals on different hunts. And they were pretty much there to like, park rangers kind of take and keep an eye over this land. And when they're out there all the time, they need some kind of protein. They need some kind of sustenance they can take with them. So you see military people referenced and, and I guarantee people in the military, you know, in that part of the uh, world were eating lawn jagger as well. But I think game wardens are where the name is directly tied to. It really tracks because it fills you up. Yep. It's not a small little thing. Like, I I feel like, wow, I really ate something. Like, I'm ready to go. And <laughs> totally. I, <laughs> so I did, you know, talk, mentioned your book. Your book is called The Perfect Pair. And yep. I just want to know, how did you become the Johnny Appleseed of <laughs> Land Jaeger in Wisconsin? You're, you know, Honestly, it just all started in upstate New York. Um, I'm from the Utica area of New York. And my uncle lived in Albany. And there was a place called Rolf's Meat Market, or actually Rolf's Pork Store, which is an awesome name. And he would bring these Land Jaeger out to my family. And it just kept being a, a tradition within our family, even when I moved to Colorado. And when I landed here... I just started seeing it, the same thing you just mentioned earlier. Like I saw it at the old fashioned, I saw it at the Regent Market, I saw it at Stalsies. And then I, you know, being in love with New Glarus Brewing and loving New, New Glarus as a town, I'd always see it there. And I just said, I, I need to find out more about this. I just, I need to know any information. There was little snippets here or there. I won't say any, but for as vast as the web, World Wide Web is, it was pretty scarce. So I just started digging in and I started chatting with people. And honestly, I had no idea how passionate people were about when I when I put, set out to write a book about a specific sausage snack in one small county uh, in the state of Wisconsin. I was like, I'll probably end up at 20 pages and 16 people will read this total, you know, uh, and I had people of all ages, you know, people in their 20s, 30s, I love Landager. I eat it every time I go out or people in their 90s, like adorable ladies coming up to me in Monroe saying, I've been eating Landager since I was two. And then saying stuff like this book is a gift to Green County. Like that's super touching when you're you're dealing with these family histories, these regional histories, things that people are really proud of. And it kind of just branched off from there. Oh my goodness. I mean, and, and it sounds like extreme, like productive, your nature, you want to be productive and you're writing and you got onto something that was personal to you and you touched this chord that you didn't even know the degree for which, you know, is going to resonate with folks around here. People love it. And you know, it's, it's also Wisconsin, right? You, you live here, like mm -hmm. people are very proud of Wisconsin. They're very proud of the Packers. They're very proud of eating brats and drinking Miller lights and, and the, the things that they're into, they're really, really into. And so you're around a proud group of people and you're giving them a sausage <laughs> in the state of Wisconsin. It's it's kind of a win win. So the, the title of the book is called A Perfect Pair. It sounds like you love beer. We obviously love beer here. So it's good that you're here. There are lots of synchronicities happening. <laughs> tell yep. us tell us about why do Lawn Jaegers make such good companions to beer? Why are they a perfect pair? Because <laughs> I think, you know, it's obviously you can always get a, a snack mix. You can always get a thing of chips. You know, I love going to the old fashioned and getting a Schlitz and uh, one of their spicy pickled eggs. But there's just something Ooh. special. Yeah, they're, they're, they got a, <laughs> I've not had heat. that combo. 
Wow. It's pretty killer. And it's like $3. It's incredible. Gotta love Wisconsin. But there's just something about that satiation you get from this saltiness of this meat, the snap that you mentioned. You know, I've had a lot of people say to me, uh, you know, I didn't like Mondeager at first because I bought a, a pack of it and I ate it right away and it was kind of chewy. And, and I like to tell people, you know, I prefer them at about three days out of the package. Um, the snap that you had, that that's definitely a three day plus snap we're talking right there. <laughs> that was a good snap. <laughs> <laughs> it was a solid snap. Um, and so there's just, you know, I'm very much a texture person, right? With, you know, the feel of like eating some brown rice or some udon. I think there's something really savory and specially um, good, not say good, but special about that snap of the lawn digger when you're chewing it. That's the first thing that I noticed and recalled, like it's something you might not think about it, but it is nice. Like it's that pack and kind of what you were discussing, the packaging and how that happened. It's not, it doesn't have packaging on it. It's the packaging is the <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. I do say to people when they, if they do take it hiking with you, at least put it in a, in a napkin or a paper towel. Cause it does, Get a little greasy, so don't you want to ruin your your good hiking jeans when you got your lawn jager in there? That's good to know. What Madison bars currently have lawn jager? Yeah, so uh, right now we got musky, uh, Robin Room, uh, soon to be uh, a Black Rose blending that used to be Funk Factory, Barley Pop, Stark Weather. I was working with East Johnson Family Restaurant for a while. while. Old fashioned. I'm definitely forgetting a couple of them in there, unfortunately, but... That's okay. People can look him up. <laughs> Don't exactly. you hold him accountable. He's doing a good work here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here, and I appreciate your Lon Jaeger enthusiasm. That's Jesse Brookstein, author of A Perfect Pair, The History of Lon Jaeger in Greene County, Wisconsin. You can find a link to his book in our show notes. And if you want to get hungry, we're talking about food every Thursday here on the show. So get ready. And also feel free to send us ideas. What do you want to hear about? We're at madison at citycast.fm. And here's what else Madison's talking about. Did you know that in some parts of Madison, it's against the law for more than two people who aren't related to live together? And that it's different whether you're a renter or an owner? That's due to Madison's zoning code. The city council is debating whether to change this and could vote on it later this month. This comes as the city is trying to figure out how to build more housing and make housing more affordable. And the Madison School District is making some changes to their schedule. Because there was a snow day last week, and one in December, they have to make up that missed class time. So starting next Monday, February 20th, middle school students will have an extra five minutes added to their day. That's through the end of the school year. There will also be an extra day of class in May. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell someone who loves salty snacks to check out our podcast? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Until then, keep it real and walk in light. If you're hungry and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs>